So, and uh, well, we'll, we'll come back to the psoriasis yeah. thing in a second. So um, they never really understood what triggered it in those early years. Although, yeah. um, and, and in those zero to three is when the microbiome is being formed. Um, mm -hmm. So everything you do in those first three years makes all the difference. Um, do you remember like that? Were you, do you know if you were living in a house with mold or what the environment in your home was like? So Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order now. I hope this book changes your life the way the information has changed hundreds of thousands of women that have applied it. From the bottom of my heart, enjoy and let's get healthy together. I had a Gekkerman treatment when I was six, which is where they wrap you in coal tar and you sit there for six hours for two weeks. And then um, they, I tried that at 11 again, which they had to send me to the emergency room because I had panic attacks. So those, those, those were my first panic attacks. Those started early. Um, and then I, I had, I knew what was going on at that time. Um, not at six. And then between that time, they tried, I, I did a lot of topical steroids. I did a lot of topical coal tar. Um, and then in my, I would say in my teens and twenties, they gave me methotrexate. They gave me um, cyclosporin. They gave me, um, I mean, like heavy medications for people, yeah, yeah. you know, that are having um, like organ transplants and things along those lines. Um, and they, they, I tried a treatment called Puba, which was where I would take these pills and I would stand in front of this light box that would pull the light like further into my body. Um, and it made me so sick. Like, I mean, all these medications really, you know, affected my immune system yeah. tremendously. So I was on the road and had no immune system and would get sick all the time. Yeah. So. That's crazy. So, and uh, well, we'll, we'll come back to the psoriasis yeah. thing in a second. So um, they never really understood what triggered it in those early years, although, yeah. um, and, and in those zero to three is when the microbiome is being formed. Um, mm -hmm. so everything you do in those first three years makes all the difference. Um, do you remember like that? Were you, do you know if you were living in a house with mold or what the environment in your home was like? Um, no, do, do I have don't any remember recollection mold. of those first three um, years. No, I don't remember mold. I know I have to ask my mom about that. <laughs> um, but I came home like, I mean, I I think we lived in a trailer. Like we lived in a trailer when I was yeah. little bitty. And then we lived in an apartment complex when I was um, from like six to so I bought my own house at 13. <laughs> at 13. Oh my gosh. Which is like surreal to think even like hear it about, is. right? Yeah. It's so trippy. Yeah. And what, at what age did they discover that your voice was great? At 18 months old, I could sing. Like my dad has tapes of me singing when I was 18 months old and you couldn't understand a word I was saying, but then I would sing and it was, it was actually like, it was formed. Crazy. I was, I, I was, I think I was actually learning words through music, through the songs I was singing. Cause I was so young. That's and crazy. then by five, like my voice was very, very different than most five year olds. Fully developed. And yeah. so what were your parents musical? Like how did they listen to their 18 month old and go, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> There's something spectacular here. Yeah. Um, my dad played guitar a little bit and my mom loved music. Like they both loved music, but it was, there was nothing, um, you know, it was nothing like what I did. Um, right. But yeah, it was, it was a very musical household. Okay. So my dad and but my mom would play, my mom would play Motown. My dad would play country and, and like classic rock. And I, um, I just gravitated towards it. And I also, I think I gravitated towards the performance and the emotional piece of it, like being able to express myself. Cause I, I grew up in a household where my mom, my mom was very depressed. I mean, she had a hysterectomy like right after, right after I came mm. out. So oh, wow. she was, yeah, there was a, she was very attached and probably detached at the same time, if that's possible. Right. Um, and my dad was incredibly angry and um, kind of lived in this very anxiety ridden place. So it was, it was not a comfortable household. Um, right. There was always this kind of push pull of these two very, uh, the, the two things that show up in me now. Right. <laughs> ah, the duality. Process. Here's the duality. The duality. Oh, yeah. I never, that ding, 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 little button yeah. hit there for me. Yeah. So, you know, from, from zero to seven, we absorb everything that is in our environment. Um, 
And so all of that is getting stuck in your, in your subconscious mind, everything that goes on from zero to seven. So I've thought about this a lot um, with you is like, you come out with this amazing talent. You're in a household where there's a lot of um, uh, mental anguish, which a lot of, a lot of kids grow up in, and then you're catapulted out into the world in this very surreal way. Do you remember like that? What was there a point where you were singing just because it was fun? And then all of a sudden, oh no, we're going to go to singing competitions. We're going to like <laughs> amp this up. Was there like a turning point in that, in those early years that you remember that it just changed into, gosh, this is going to be a thing. Um, I, my dance teacher, when I was five had convinced my mom to put me into a dance competition, um, a song and dance competition. And I was, I was, yeah, I was five at the time. So it was a six and under category and there was no one else that was in the six and under category. So they put me in the, the seven to 12 year olds. Um, and then I ended up winning like overall in the whole competition as this five-year-old. And that was, my dad was a hunter. So he, he saw me sing and then went hunting after and left and then came home to me with this massive trophy that was like five times the size of me. And he asked me at that point, like, is this what you love? And of course, my five-year-old self was like, yeah. I mean, if I can win a right. trophy for that, absolutely. <laughs> um, I want a so, big trophy, dad. Right? So I think, I think that I, there were so, there's so many layers to why I do what I do. Right. Um, I think, I think I had a natural gift for it. I think I really did love music. Um, and I also knew that that was a way for me to receive love. And so um, I, I think at that moment, like, you know, as much as a five-year-old can say like, yeah, I love this. It just kind of went from there. Um, right. and I was always one of those that I was an only, I'm an only child. So it was, you know, it was always like the achieve, achieve, achieve. So I, I you know, I played softball competitively. I took piano lessons. I was dancing, I was singing. So there's always something going on at some point my parents looked at me and were like, you have to drop something. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I don't even remember what I dropped at the time. I think I dropped, I think I dropped dance for a moment. Um, and then eventually like piano, I would not drop softball. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Yes. I loved softball so much. Um, so yeah, it was, it, there was a constant, you know, Achievement. And so from zero to seven, all that programming gets instilled in our brains and then it plays out the rest of our life. So do you feel like you, uh, you sing now to get love? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely, well, I absolutely have done that and there's always a component to that. Yeah. Um, but that's really shifted for me. Um, I know I had a really quiet crowd the other night. I told you this. I had a really cr quiet crowd the other night and I, you know, I feed off the crowd. Like I, you know, I feed off of that energy and I sometimes will just go to a really dark place if people aren't giving me that energy back and I'll start to spin in my head about, you know, what's wrong with me and I'm not, you know, am I not entertaining enough and all of those things. And I found myself singing for myself at that point um, okay. because yeah. And I, I don't know if I could have, done that it, um, or been in that space or headspace if I wouldn't if I hadn't already found this sense of love that comes from within mm -hmm. um, because it was it was enough for me to want to be good for myself mm -hmm. um, and that's amazing that's though. a new shift yeah it's a totally yeah. new shift um, because I think I really you know search for that validation externally and now it's like oh I could, you know, be singing for nobody and just want to be good for me and validate myself. And so that's a, that's a big shift. That's huge. Like when yeah. you told me that the other day, I was like, <laughs> how many shows have you done? And you did one for you is yeah. like, is, is really amazing. And it's, don't you wish you could go back to your 20 year old self and tell her that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause I mean, I can't tell you the, the times that I've been on stage and I would search out in the crowd, like everybody who looked like they weren't having a good time or looked like they don't want to, didn't want to be there. And it created this narrative in my head about how I was, there was something wrong with me. Wow. Um, I mean, and there was, you know, 
because of I've been through so much publicly and, you know, to have my name drug through the media like it has been. And at that time, I think that really that created this perfect storm where I I did have this you know, if people were coming to the show, obviously they wanted to be there. But for me, it was like with every look for, for people who judged me because I was judging myself so harshly, you know, ultimately. But, but this is what happens. I think with those, that subconscious programming is that you look to validate it and you don't even realize you're doing it. Yeah. So like the, the fact that you, the, I don't even think you fully realized what you did on Saturday night, because the mm-hmm. fact that you had, a, like, it's like, it was like a pattern interrupt to your nervous system. Mm-hmm. It, I, I mean, maybe you've done this before from stage, but be to be able to say, I don't need the audience to show up a certain way. I'm going to do this for me. Have you ever done that in a, it before in a, in a show or is that yeah. one? Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's a new thing. I, I've been noticing a pattern for me is withholding love and, and, and it's actually mm-hmm. very painful uh, because uh, ultimately I think my, all of our nature is to, is loving. Um, but yeah. to, to have to be in a pattern where you're withholding something because you're afraid that you're going to get hurt. So you don't want to give it out because you think ultimately there's in my mind, the word that comes up is, uh, is I'm going to be destroyed. Yeah. And so, um, so that noticing that pattern and being able to, like you said, interrupt it, I've, I've noticed that I'm very aware that the withholding, even from stage, um, will, it, it, it creates, like I said, these narratives in my head that hurt more than if I just give myself all of myself, yeah. um, no matter what is coming back at me. And yeah. so if I, and, and it feels good. Like it, it feels good to just know that I did my best with yeah. what I, what I have at that moment in time. And sometimes, I mean, Saturday night when I, when I experienced this, I was exhausted. I was so tired. Um, I had just been through 10 days of tons of promotion for the new album and I had no energy. So it's, you know, that's when I really need that I thought well, I thought I did I need that energy from the crowds and I was like no nope, I just I'm just gonna do it for me and you know it was and I found people in the audience that's the thing I started looking for people in the audience that were like really in it with me even yeah. though even though the whole crowd might not, not have been and I started singing to them and yeah it was a it was a different experience and I, I think that's just my awareness of the pattern yeah. you know to be able to be like oh that's just that's a pattern I don't have to believe that pattern yeah which is, is so beautiful because, I mean, A, so many people are unconscious as we move into our adult years that we don't even realize that what others have said to us, the experiences we had, especially in those zero to seven years when the subconscious mind is forming, it we play it out the rest of our life until we actually sit and say to ourselves, is this, is this po- that pattern of thought working for me anymore? And yeah. what I hear and what you just said is, okay, needing the audience to be a certain way, needing media, people to receive me in a certain way, I'm going to let that go. And I'm going to, I'm going to let me serve me. I mm-hmm. mean, that is, that's a huge shift. And I'm really excited to watch as you go through your forties, because I think as women, as we get older, we, we take ownership of our happiness over a lot more. Mm -hmm. And we start to catch ourselves in those moments where we're like, I don't, I don't want to break my back to be able to make you happy. I'm going to make me happy first. And then if you want to follow, that's wonderful. So, yeah, I was going to say, and in turn, I mean, serving myself in that moment in turn, I serve everyone else too, because, you know, like you said, if you want to join great, and if not, like you're still, you're still getting this, you know, a, a enlivened piece of me like you're still um you know I, I it just it doesn't bring me down in in order to kind of fit the energy I think that's a lot of you know we talk about energetics so much and it's I think some especially being an only child and feeling like I needed to match the energetics of my parents in some way in order to receive love um I've allowed the energetics of the external and to pull me down so that I can then feel like I'm meeting them in order to receive love. And now I'm like, no, I'm just going to like, just going to give myself love. And if you want to join me in the love fest, then that's great. 
<laughs> I, I freaking love that. I love yeah. that. I think that's so, that's such a beautiful awareness to get to what. So when did you win star search? Oh my gosh. So I didn't win. I won my first time and I lost oh. my second time. Um, I was Especially what I know in my Leanne Ryan. No, well, I, I, I won the first time and then I lost my second time. Um, the funny story about that, I was, there was this song that I was doing and there was, there was a key change in the song and they had it like three beats off from where the record was or how I normally did it and they wouldn't change it. And so it just like threw me into this loop of, I was just terrified because I was afraid I was going to miss it. And I just didn't, yeah, it just didn't work. <laughs> and then I came off stage and my, my godmother was like, let's go to Disneyland. And I'm like, cool. And everything was better. So <laughs> that's all it takes. So that wasn't, that wasn't the, that wasn't the singing contest that launched you? No. So I, there was no real contest. Um, I, I started singing at local operas in Texas when I was seven, like every Saturday night. And I made a little demo tape when I was nine, I guess. And that got basically um, circulated through all the blockbuster music stores when there was blockbuster music stores. Blockbuster! Um, I, I know. Blockbuster! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Blockbuster Music Stores. And so, and then I made another little demo tape when I was 11 that was my, was Blue was my first song that was on that. And that got picked up by um, a label and they just kind of got in their hands and that's how it all happened. But yeah, I know our, our big, you know, like American Idol, all those things are so huge now to be discovered, but Star Search was it back then. And yeah, I, I, I failed, but it was a good fail. <laughs> yes, it, Ed McMahon. I remember watching Star Search as a kid. And Shirley, you know, I've never asked you this. You should be like an American Idol judge, like or something like that. <laughs> for God's sake, if anybody deserves that, that oh my gosh, uh, totally. position, you do. So that would be fun, actually. Yeah. We've talked about that before. So we'll see. You, Maybe that'll you, happen one of these days. Yeah, you'd be great at it. So, okay. And then how old were you when you won a grant with two Grammys? I was 14. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've never asked you this question, but you're 14 years old. The world is like super excited about you and you're at the Grammys thinking you could win, but I'm trying to think of this from a 14 year old's perspective. Yeah. What? How do you like, how do you even, do you understand the magnitude of what that award is at that time? No, not at all. And I was sick with 104 fever and flu that night. And um, I, they told me, so no country artist and no country artist had ever won best new artist. And of course I was 14 too. So everybody was thinking I wouldn't win anything that night. And I remember asking my publicist, I was like, should I think of something to say? And they're like, no, we, you know, they were just really honest. Like this probably won't happen. I'm like, well, then why am I going? Cause I'm si like, I'm sick as a dog. I was, it was cold outside. I remember and I, in the limo there, I had my face pressed up against the window because it was, I was so sick because it was cold and I felt good. And um, I get there and they have a pre-awards and I was up for best vocal performance for blue. And I won that. And then they were like, well, maybe you should think of something to say <laughs> in case. And so, one. yeah, in case. And so I did, I won that award that night. I don't remember anything from that night except for being really ill and it just being like this whirlwind. I have to watch, when I watch footage of it, like I can vaguely like recall that moment. But my, yeah, my, my parents were going through a divorce at that time. Like right when that happened, um, I re I remember all all the bad things. <laughs> it's like like a good like a good teenager yeah, should. <laughs> yeah, it's like looking for the people in the audience that are that don't love me. Um, it's yeah, it's that that piece of my brain that that's what it recalls is you know illness and divorce and but I mean it was an incredible moment and no I I didn't understand the magnitude of that yeah. And all. did you get like why the, all the adults around you were like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> like, I were think you so. riding off of their like adult knowledge of what had just gone on? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, that probably was the case. But it was like, I mean, that time in my life, I was, you know, I was doing four hours of school, homeschooling a day. I was doing interview after interview and then going on stage and performing every night. So like my schedule had, there was no room to think 
mm. at all. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And maybe not even to experience joy. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, my joy at that at that moment in time was like, I would go to the mall on my day off, you know, or, or and which was insane because I, I don't know how I thought that like no one would recognize me. It was it was chaos everywhere that I went. Um, or I would put on my rollerblades and like skate around the arena that we were, you know, touring in. Um, but that was normal to me. Like the, not till, you know, not till I had my stepsons around me, um, who were two and six when I was first in their lives. Like once the oldest hit 11, I understood, like, that's when I signed my record deal. So I had no, I had no form of reference really right. until them to go, oh, yeah. that was like incredibly <laughs> abnormal. Right. Yeah. Wow. And so what, what have, we've talked a little bit about your dopamine system at that yeah. point. <laughs> and I actually, prior to this uh, interview, uh, you know, I'm like n- super fascinated by neurotransmitters right now. And so I wanted to go back and look at like, when did the, when does the dopamine system come in? When does the serotonin system come in? So check this out. So this is, this is, this is you guys, everybody's getting a little behind the scenes of how you and I chat with each other. Um, But GABA, the calming neurotransmitter Mm -hmm. is actually formulated in the womb. So that whole system actually comes in the womb and you start to get the, the development based off of mom's GABA system. That explains a lot because my mom is such a warrior. And check this out. So the two precursors for GABA at that time are glycine and glutamine. They help mm-hmm. make GABA. So if mom's deficient in GABA, that in those two things, she'll be deficient in GABA. She's a warrior. So she's using a lot of GABA. You're in the womb and your GABA system is developing. Guess what two amino acids are missing in your most recent test? Those. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. I oh, I almost sent you a message today and was like, oh my God, another puzzle piece. Yeah. Like, I don't think you've had enough to make GABA from the beginning, which I know that, you know, anxiety has been a pretty common experience for you. But yeah, if I, if I really think about my anxiety, like, you know, between, between the psoriasis and then like, I would have reoccurring nightmares as a child. Like I never, you know, I slept, I slept with my mom until I was 11 because Mm. I couldn't, like, I was afraid people were going to come get me in the middle of the night. Like I had a real, (laughs) I have no GABA. Right. You had no GABA. Yeah. And then, and then check this out. So, so from like zero to 13, your nervous system that is being developed is the sympathetic nervous system. It's not until you actually go through puberty that the parasympathetic starts to kick in. Oh, so well, then I was screwed. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like if you think about like you were in this surreal environment with all these adults swirling around you, I can only imagine like what was going through their head and, you know, the, all the ways that they wanted to you know, uh, see you as a human, uh, uh, your mm-hmm. career at this young age, but you you had no GABA, your dopamine, dopamine comes in usually from about eight and under, we have the most amount of dopamine um, and serotonin, and then it slowly depletes after that. So I also wonder if your serotonin and dopamine system were already getting drained. I mean, I, you and I've talked about this, like a Grammy winning a Grammy had to be like a massive dopamine rush. And then mm-hmm. after that had to be kind of sucky. I don't yeah. know. How, can you remember how you felt a couple of days afterwards? I don't at that point, but it's funny. Cause I, you know, I just released my new album and I, as soon as midnight struck and the album was out I could already feel the come down so there yeah and I I I remember um we went to dinner that night and I was like we went back to the room and I looked at Eddie and I was like I hate this feeling because it I it's it's hard because it's you it's joyous I'm so happy it's out there but then the feeling of the come down and it happens. I mean, it happens every time I go on stage, Yeah, there's a come down after, and it was like a crash and it feels like, it feels like it feels drug induced. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not, and it's just, but it feels like it's, it's drug induced and yeah. you, there's always this come down and this crash. And then, you know, I wake up the next morning and have to like try to get myself wrapped up again. And um, so I just, I just experienced that hardcore, 
um, crash from such a big, like, you know, defining moment for me. And I, I can only imagine, like, think about how many of those I've been through in my life. I mean, luckily, <laughs> luckily there's been many, but, right. um, but, but it's but a you're... constant roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, when I, I've, I've thought about this a lot that your nervous system is chemically addicted to this life that was created for you. Mm -hmm. And so as you are taking back your life and being like, this is the way I'm going to live it, then there's a taking back of those chemicals as well. And what you and I've talked a lot about. <laughs> and then I don't create them at this moment or I'm creating less of them. Or you're creating of less of them. <laughs> but it's like, it, you know, dopamine's like anything else that we're addicted to. It's like in order to get off the addiction, there has to be a little bit of a letdown. Mm -hmm. And, but yet navigating, what does that letdown look like? I think is, has been really, um, is interesting for all of us, but especially for someone like you who has been had these so many dopamine rich moments that how at 40 years old, do you just sit on the couch? Cause there's no dopamine on the couch, but can there be, can, can my couch shop for me? I was just thinking, I was, we're talking about this. I'm like, can couch time become a piece of like my dopamine hit? Because I have never, I haven't had it. You Maybe know, if you bring I chocolate wish. to the couch. Oh, I bring, <laughs> totally bring chocolate to the couch. No, I love where you're going with this. Go, yeah. No, no, I'm just thinking like, could that, I wonder how we create dopamine in that situation. Because it is very like, you know, my couch time, I really love being on the couch. But it's when I lay down, like my body goes into my body basically goes into fight or flight because it yeah. thinks like, what the hell are you doing sitting right. down? Right. <laughs> you know, there's you, so much to do. I mean, that's that's so, you know, that has been like the really interesting um, aha for me watching your life has been that you've got this mixture of hormones and we'll, we're, we're, we're getting into that here in a moment and um, you know, trying to rebalance your hormones, rebalance your, your dopamine and serotonin and GABA system, and then rebalance your nervous system. But you know, where other kids as they grew up had like high moments and then relaxation, high moments and then mm -hmm. relaxation, you had more dopamine, uh, like sympathetic nervous system moments than, than a growing child should have. Yeah, so, there's no, there was no relaxation. No. And, and I was just noticing doing all of this press that I just did for the album, you know, when I had like, I basically had I had three shows, and then I had three days on of like, of intense press, and interview after interview after interview, and I would go home at night and have no way to relax, like nothing does it, nothing will help me. I had my sleep, like my heart rate still elevated, like everything is because my body's still in fight or flight. And I, the great thing is though, when I was done with it, I have noticed, I noticed the crash. And I also noticed that I have my just normal level of anxiety, not like the extreme level. So I, I recognize, I was able to recognize that my body was actually coming out of that fight or flight. Um, and back that's to amazing. Kind of my normal baseline. Yeah. But I, and I also recognized how intense that fight or flight became. Yeah. Um, in that situation. And I think back to my early childhood and that's how intense it was all the time, yeah. all the time. Yeah. I, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I think very few of us have any reference point as adults, we have reference point, but not as a, a child when you should be out playing in the, in the neighborhood, um, and experiencing joy. That was, you know, you had a different level of, of joy, different joys. Yeah. yeah but it was, yeah. I, I think of it, if I really think if there's anyone that can, um, you know, anybody who's been in like an, a daily kind of, uh, it feels like a war zone. I'll, 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 I'll mm. equate it to that. It feels yeah. like your body is in a, is in a war zone at all times. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't know how to come out. And I noticing, like we're saying, like this, said, noticing the, the crash and then being able to kind of come back to a baseline. I'm like, oh, there is a, there is a flexibility, even though my baseline doesn't feel completely comfortable right. um, or relaxed. It, there is a lower baseline than what I think I was living in. And do you feel like now 
you know, you're start, at least you're starting to see that. And then you're mm-hmm. gathering the tools on what you need to be able to practice parasympathetic, to, uh, to be aware of when that nervous system needs to relax. I'm like, I, I just take a really, I, know, I saw you. Ooh, um, yeah. I mean, I, yes. I, I have tools to be able to help myself relax. Although sometimes I will feel like my nervous system is so deeply foundationally programmed in this way that I don't think I know yet. Mm -hmm. I'll say yet. Mm -hmm. um, What a real relaxed, like, quote unquote, normal nervous system feels like. It's coming. It's coming. I I am hell bent determined to make sure you experience (laughs) that. And yeah. And you know, the other part of what happens in those years, if you look at when your life was catapulted into everybody's public eye, is that that's also the time you're supposed to get your parasympathetic nervous system um, Mm -hmm. maturing. So there's a lot of conversation about people saying, well, my, you know, my teenager sleeps all the time and doesn't pick up after themselves. And Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they move so slow. And what they often is not well understood is that that's what's supposed to happen in the teenage years. There's a mat, a maturing of that parasympathetic uh, nervous system. And that's what your teenage uh, child is doing you didn't get that opportunity. So you got to go at 40 now and really work on, on practicing parasympathetic, almost like a teenager would and go back and, and retrain that. And, you know, it's easy for people listening to go, well, yeah, you know, I didn't grow up as Leanne Rhymes, but I, there are people who were, you know, sexually assaulted at that age yeah. that grew up it's in trauma, house. any kind trauma. of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Any kind of traumatic situation where on a daily basis, there was a continual yeah. fight or flight response. Um, and really interesting too, cause I go into freeze too, you know, if, if you can't fight or flee, you, you freeze. Yeah. And so, um, there's a, and, and I, you know, what I equate, uh, relaxation to is normally a freeze response because I feel like if I relax mm. too much, there's no drive out of it. Mm. Um, so my anxiety and that, that fight or flight actually feels like what stimulates me to, 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 to do in the world. To go. So, yeah. So yeah. anytime I crash and go into what I perceive as a freeze response, because I'm my freeze response and my relaxation are so intertwined. I, I fear that place Yeah, because I feel like, oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to get eaten alive by this relaxation thing. And I'm going to just yeah never be able but, to move from it. So, you know, you and I've talked about the polyvagal theory that mm-hmm. the, the way that stress should happen is we should have stress. We should go into sympathetic and then we go into parasympathetic and relax. And then we go into sympathetic and then we go into parasympathetic and we should be in and out of those all the time. Um, but what you're just describing is that you went to that next layer of a nervous system, the freeze one, and that's where we want to withdraw. We want to numb ourselves with food, alcohol, drugs. Um, it's where we complete, it's the opposite of sympathetic. We completely withdraw, which is Mm -hmm. what, what it sounds like. Again, I just want to point out that in this day and age, we're seeing so many teenagers go through that. They're, they're constantly in that freeze nervous system. So just being aware of it is really important and, and pulling yourself out of it in that moment and being like, I'm going into freeze, Mm -hmm. but I really need to be going into parasympathetic how do I get there? And having tools to that is what I know you're learning to do. Yeah. I was going to say that's still, I'm still Uh, learning. Although if I really think about it, you know, I actually had, um, my trainer today was she's, she was commenting on the fact she's like, your energy level is very different after you come home from, you know, these long periods of time of being on the road. She's like, you usually would have like zero energy and I know you're tired, but you have more energy. And you know, uh, like I'm noticing, like I said, the I'm I'm not going into complete freeze. I am allowing myself to have the crash, feeling a little bit uncomfortable in the crash, and then letting myself sleep. I take naps now. Like I'm able to, you know, um, I'm able to 
I mean, these are tools now that I'm able to kind of, I've, I'm starting to train myself to go into that parasympathetic state yeah. instead of freeze and just recognize that, hey, I'm tired and I'm going to do what I can with what I have today and not try to force myself, you know, any further past that, yeah. um, I think is a huge thing because I am I was constantly like trying to get, you know, to, to get myself out of that free state. I was, I was pushing myself way further than I ever could. And you can't push yourself out of freeze. That's the thing. And that's like the thing about, well, fun. I'm like, I've done it a <laughs> few times. I mean, I've, that's the thing. Mm. Like, I, I think I've had to override my body in so many ways that I've found ways to get myself out of that state. Mm. And that the, the way is the anxiety. I think that's what I'm, mm, you it's know, the it's energy like, out. Yeah. It's the energy out of freeze for yeah. me. Right. Yeah. That's, that makes so much sense. And I'm going to tell you, you do, you're doing way better yeah. with the relaxation <laughs> than when I first met you. Like yeah. I remember you were like, what do you want me to do when <laughs> I come home, sit on the couch? That's like torture. <laughs> So, yes. uh, so you've definitely gotten better at that, but right. I, but I see everything through the lens of your nervous system and your, and your hormone, your neurochemical system. And I always think, God, you were just set up for a mm -hmm. uh, failure with, when it yeah. comes to relaxation in, in this surreal world that you live in down, even down to, I've thought about, you talked about, you know, you wanted to roller skate around, mm -hmm. around the neighborhood and, and now people are recognizing you like, what is that? Talk a little bit about what that's like. You go out into the world. It's not like, you're not like, I don't know what it's like now, but for all those years, it's like a constant amping up of the nervous system. You're just trying to go out and be a normal human and people are recognizing you and. Yeah, uh, it's what, still that way. Um, you know, I think as a child, what got formed in that way was that I was a child and I was a cute little girl and I had to be nice you know, um, and I couldn't tell anyone no, and I couldn't, I couldn't stop people from taking a photo or asking for an autograph, you know, like there were no boundaries. And so now that system's still in place. Um, but I'm better about boundaries and, uh, you know, with people and, um, but I'm, it's still, you know, now you have people like taking pictures of you with their camera phones, like from a distance. Um, which is really the only time I ever get mad at people. I see people doing that. I'm like, you know, you can ask, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, then, but then like, if you get a long line of people, like, so I, no, you know, but I would rather people come up to me and talk to me oh, than God, I would don't like, say someone, that, <laughs> no, but someone <laughs> sneaking a photo, it just seems like, because I think also, you know, I've been, you know, I've been followed, I follow, get followed by paparazzi all the time. And it's like, they're, they'll hide in the bush, they'll hide in their car. And like, it always feels like I'm being spied upon. Right. And so I would rather have like a conversation with people or like kind people like come up and yeah. say hello. Um, then the spying upon is what has always put my nervous system into like this into fight or flight, because you're yeah. constantly like looking over your shoulder and um, and that, you know, now with, with phones and people in social media, that's become even more of a thing. And so, um, yeah, it, you, I mean, I, my anonymity is, it's not, it's, I've never had any that I can remember. Um, so it, that, that definitely has put me in a very awkward place, this feeling of having, having to be guarded. Um, but that's also, you know, like I said, to have a boundary now and to be like, you know, it's 530. Can we just in AM? Can we just say hi to each other? It's so nice to meet you. I don't feel like I don't feel up for it. Like I'm, I'm able to say that now. Yeah. Where as a kid, like it was always like, they're going to think you're really mean if you you know, if you don't give them what they want. Yeah. So that's shifted. It, I think that's a really polite way of saying everything that you just said. But I feel like from a nervous system standpoint, um, I don't know. You've made me re really think about how we um, interact with our celebrities because mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's your nervous system. Every time you go out, if somebody's going to be like, take a picture, paparazzi is going to jump out at you. They're going to recognize you. Your nervous system is never able to relax, even going to the freaking grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, that is, that's, that's unfair. You know, like, I mean, I, I'm, this is where like, 
you know, the mama bear in me kicks in because yeah. I feel like you've already given so much to the world and we've all benefited from your beautiful voice. And whether it's you or an, or our favorite actor or somebody else, the fact that we feel like we want to talk to you when we see you out in the <laughs> world um, is, is almost, I mean, this is just me. I feel like it's a little bit of um, a level of disrespect because you deserve to be able to go out into the world and have a calm nervous system and not constantly be bombarded. But can anyone go out in this world and have a calm nervous <laughs> system? I don't care if you're celebrity or not. I feel like maybe I feel, I feel like we, you know, we just are we're in this world where if we go out the door, we've been programmed, you know, to think it's a good point. We've been programmed to think that everyone is against us, that everyone's bad, everyone's lying. Like, I mean, really, this is that's a world I grew up in. I'm sure a lot of other people grew up in that too. And it's, you know, I've had to retrain myself. And honestly, from a celebrity point of view, like I will, like I said, I know I have boundaries now. I know I can say no, which knowing I can say no Mm. kindly is a really big, like, like weight off my shoulders. Um, And I, I feel like I, um, you know, I feel like I have really good people around me that protect me too, which is nice to have around um that actually set a boundary when I sometimes can't um and and I feel like you know being out in public um yeah I feel like it's yeah I I think just as a human being these days like we have so many stressors stressors coming towards us and it's I've had to reprogram my mind to see the good in people Mm -hmm. to you know, to give people the benefit of the doubt, to know that we're all go, we've all had our traumas Mm -hmm. to know that we all react from the traumas. And I, I have, even though there's a child in me that is still keeping up a wall, I make a really, um, I make an effort to know that that's playing in the background because I think, like I said, it's so foundational for me that that tape is still running or that it's not even the mental tape. It's the energetic tape. Mm -hmm. The energetic tape is still running. Although I am choosing to allow that to run and still be present with people in the world because there was a time and I'll still go through it sometimes. Like I won't look people in the eye because I know if I look up, like somebody's going to be like, Oh, Hey. Um, so, but now I will, I I want to like, Mm -hmm. I'll, I want to connect with people. Like I want to, to, no, I don't need them to recognize me or connect in that way. I just want to smile at people. And I want to like, I want, I think I want people to know that they're not alone. And sometimes I feel very lonely being on the road. And it's like, I need to see people's eyes. I need to, I mean, think about like all we went through with the masks and like not being able to, I would smile underneath my mask and be like, no one can see me. And I just want them (laughs) to feel good today. So I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just part of our world and we have to consciously make the effort to reshift that programming Mm -hmm. um because it's what we've been fed all of these years and and what i hear in the in all of that is when we come celebrity or not in admiration of our celebrities or not just two humans interacting with two two humans if we can come with kindness and compassion and i i've really learned this in my own life of like When I'm interacting with somebody, I know that I'm not just interacting with the face I'm seeing in that moment. I'm interacting with somebody who's cried their eyes out on the worst days, who might have some traumas that maybe has something really interesting, some interesting story that I can learn from. Like there's a, there's a history when I'm interacting with another human and I have so much compassion for that history because I don't know what it is, but it's mm-hmm. that history that, that they bring to the interaction with me. Mm-hmm. So if they are edgy with me, I always think, I don't know what their day was like. I don't know what their childhood was like, but mm-hmm. I do know that I can, I can, I cannot react to, to the energy that they're giving me. I can yeah. give them a smile. I can show up as kindness and I can try to make their day better. And I think what I hear from you is if 
if we just, when we see our celebrities that we love out there, if we just approach them with that same level of love and, yeah. and appreciation, that would make it much easier as someone in your position to be able to receive it and have this really cool human experience. Is that Yeah, it? absolutely. I mean, I love having those experiences with people when it's on that kind of level. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, people share stories with me all the time of how something I recorded or something I did like affected them and has changed their life or, and, you know, like I've had to learn how to receive that because it's, yeah. it comes at me often. And, and because I've had such a wall, I've had to, I can't let it in. And now, and now I can, yeah. um, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 I think we, we really have kind of blocked out the human side of our yes, celebrities for yes, so long. Yes, and then we want, you know, we it. want to cancel everyone because yeah. of their humanity. And it's like, okay, we need to find this common ground that just because someone has a gift and a talent and is famous, um, you know, it doesn't mean they're any less human. And so I think, I think that it's starting to change. I know that that's part of, I feel like that's part of my work in this world is yeah. bringing my humanity to my celebrity. You know, it's, it's, you know, I felt very much like I've had these kind of two sides of myself, especially as a child. Um, and now like my, my journey has been to create this one whole self of mm. where I feel like, you know, Leanne Rhymes is also Leanne and it's all one, it's all one consistent human. Right. Um, and so, and that feels so good speaking of feeling good to my nervous system it's like that feels good to my nervous system because it's I'm not having to fracture myself in order mm. to do my job or in order mm. to be out in the world or in order to do an interview so it's um you know and that's still kind of congealing yeah, <laughs> you know like yeah, it's still forming it. um but that's been you know my last several years of my life has been becoming that one whole right. human I, I just love that. Okay. Talk to me about your, uh, let's go to 13, 14. What year, how old were you when you started your period? I was 10. Oh, you were 10. And <laughs> uh, do you remember the day you started your period? I did everything young. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah, no, I started at my grandmother's funeral. Oh, that's right. Yes, which is really trippy. Super um, trippy and symbolic. Yeah. Yes, very. It was right before my 11th birthday. Um, she passed away and I started at her funeral. And uh, yeah, I I always wanted, I was always wanting to shave my legs as a kid. I was like, I wanted, I wanted to be a woman. Like I, I really oh, wanted that piece of my life. Yeah. Um, and so I remember, you know, it not being a really big deal, um, like in my family, we, we didn't really discuss it a lot. Like there was I don't remember much discussion around it. Like I had, you know, sex ed when I was in like fourth grade, but that was basically the time I was starting my period. So it was. This is what every woman got. Everyone, yeah. this is my big, like, yes. what is going on? Stop making the gym teachers teach us uh, was sex awful. ed. So, so awful. But <laughs> did, did, did you have the relationship with your mom where you could be like, uh, hey, I know your mother just died, but I just started my period. Or were you? No, I that? had, I, t um, I didn't talk to her much about it. I talked to my, my dad more about it than oh, my wow. mom. Yeah. Like my dad took me to get, you know, pads at the store and it was all which was kind of weird at the same time. You know, I remember my sex talk was like my dad dropped, my dad drove my bus and um, he, I was up front with him one night and he basically was just like, so, cause I was now into boys at like, you know, 14 wow. and he fumbled on the conversation about sex. And it was kind of like, you know about that. Right. And I'm like, yep, I know. Yeah that's it that was like that that was the conversation <laughs> it's not and I can so, tell you as a parent it's not an easy one to have no you got to be careful and that yeah. was it that was it oh, so yeah. you know I never had there was there was never a discussion in my family about it and if I if I did have a discussion it was with my godmother and then I would come back and tell my parents that what she told me and then she would get in trouble so it was always like very it was always very shameful there was so much shame around yeah being a woman and sex and my body Okay, but then the opposite of that is this beautiful teenager that is on stage singing some very mature songs. Mm -hmm. 
is there a, is there an inconsistency that shows up in you oh, when, for sure. when you're like a <laughs> sex symbol on stage, but then you get off stage and there's a more of a Puritan message given to you? Yeah, there was, um, you know, I was pretty wholesome, you know, kind of America's sweetheart until, you know, like 17 and I did Coyote Ugly and then uh, kind of everything went downhill from there. <laughs> um, but I, uh, that's when I first had my you know, my first kind of, um, the, that was the launch into like sex cells. Um, and I was very uncomfortable with that and very uncomfortable with being projected upon as, you know, a sex symbol in any way as I got older. Um, but those, those first few years was, you know, it was this kind of very, very pure young girl and people didn't want to see me grow up from that. Um, mm -hmm. And they had a really hard time with it. And mm -hmm. there was very much a time stamp of in people's minds of who I was. Um, so honestly, only in the last, probably like, I would say five or six years that I feel like people actually allowed me to grow up. That's crazy. If you think yeah. about it. which is really messed up yeah. <laughs> and, and as far as like for my mind yeah, of the shame around, you know, coming into my own as a woman and, you know, trying to keep myself this little girl in some way, because I think that's what people want. Yeah. You were trying to, and, uh... yeah. And then then going through, uh, you know, uh, when Eddie and I got together, a very public affair. And that was like, I think that was my like burning down the whole, mm. that whole piece. Like that was unconscious. Um, but I can look back now and be like, oh, there was a very, that was a choice that that kid like mm. needed to make in order mm. to burn that down. Um, Cause that was really the only way of severing, you know, yeah. that, that idea that people had in their mind of me and yeah. then it took all of that to go through you know them now allowing me to kind of oh now we see you as a as a 40 year old as woman a, right as, yeah. a, as a, a regular as a regular hu human woman human yes <laughs> you're not like a mermaid or like a little barbie doll so, <laughs> exactly that's what yeah. it felt like for sure but i also think from a toxicity standpoint you and i have talked about this like the number of beauty products they've put on you the you know yeah. the amount of um synthetic environments you were in just all the chemicals you have breathed in um, you know, you, I remember one of the things you told me was that they put like, I think veneers on you when you were mm -hmm. like in your, in your teenage years 16. to like, yeah, to make you look a certain way. Um, and now when I look at you, I just see this really natural woman and, um, how long did it take you to get your authentic, like look back? Yeah, it, I mean, there's always been, I feel like some sort of something I was fighting when it comes to I mean I think everybody does in this not only celebrities but I think women you know we think we have to be our we have to we have to be more than what we are yeah and um you know I I went through a phase of like using Botox for a moment like in my early 30s um and then I found a facialist who's a genius and I haven't put anything in my forever um so I and I've I've you know I've I, I, I accept these things about myself now and I want to, you know, age gracefully, but it, it's taken, it's taken all of 40 years to like feel good in my own skin. To get um, to that point. Yeah, yeah. I think last, it was it last year, year before um, I posted an Instagram photo of me with psoriasis on my body, which I had talked about psoriasis for a long time, but no one had ever seen me with it because I had been on biologic drugs forever. And then I, um, I came off of the biologics and cause I thought maybe my body was in a different place and I was fine for about two years and the pandemic hit and the stress of the pandemic, um, just, I broke out everywhere and I thought, you know, I'm going to take this moment and actually show people that I number one do have it. And I want, I know so many people are going through it. I wanted them to feel less alone in that moment. And it gave me this opportunity to like, to show the young piece of me that they were safe, even with this on my body. And I think that moment in time was really when I started to reclaim my own mm. sense of what's beautiful to me and how I can show up in the world. And it doesn't have to be polished and perfect all the time. I can still be loved in all my forms. And so I think that was a real defining moment because there was a child forever, you know, this, this little piece of me who covered up everything, every part of my body, because I was afraid to be seen 
Yeah. So, you know, I was 30, I guess 38 when I really started to reclaim that for myself. Which is amazing. And I, I've told you this before that, and I know you know this, is like every time you stand up and you take ownership over your authentic self, you give thousands, probably millions of women permission to do the same. And yeah. I, you can do it at the at the number of eyeballs on you. You can do it at such a big scale. And I don't mean that as pressure. I mean that as um, it's, it's just beautiful to watch because, uh, you know, one of the things I feel when I watch women is that we are all putting masks on. We're all trying to be something that we have, a parent has set a high bar for us or society has had set a high bar. And I feel like as I age, the, the more, the less I'm willing to, do anything to anybody else's agenda because it's just mm -hmm. freaking exhausting. So I agree. <laughs> when like someone like you, when you know Leanne Rhyme stands up and says, "I've got psoriasis, deal with it. This is what yeah. I got." Everybody else gets permission to do the same. And you know, I see a culture where, as women, we all do that. We stand up and we stop trying to be the Instagram perfect person, and we're like, "This is who I am." This is just who I am. Some days I'm like this, some days I'm like that. I, I just see that as freedom for women. I agree. I mean, I think freedom is the word that for me is driving this part of my life uh, more and more. I mean, like, look, I still wear hair extensions. I still do things like I, but I, what I found that I, I asked myself where it's coming from. Like, do I, am I needing this because I feel like I have to live up to an expectation or for me, like hair extensions make my life easier because I can braid my hair and then be done with it. Yeah. It has wave and I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. So it becomes like, you know, when I have to be doing when I'm doing stuff all the time, it be this becomes like a an easier thing for me. So it's I, I'm constantly asking myself, like, why am I doing that thing? Um, because if it's coming from this place of me feeling like I'm trying to live up to an expectation, um, I start to go, okay, well, let me, let me reassess that. And sometimes there can be a mixed bag in that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But once again, it comes back to the awareness of, oh yeah, that, that is still there for me. I still feel like I need that. Um, and, and, uh, and sometimes it's really just out of like, you know, uh, it feeling, it, it being a bit of ease for me in my life. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's like, I've shown up, I, I don't wear, I don't wear heels anymore. I mean, it's a rarity. And if I, even if I wear them down on a red carpet, it's like they come off at the ends. Like I'm barefoot most of the time. I, it, it's all about comfort for me and, you know, feeling like feeling good. I, that's the thing for me. It comes from how I always ask myself the question of how does this make me feel? Because I used to not care what I felt. Yeah. It was how it looked. Yeah. Um, and you know, I grew up in a household where that was very important. And I look. think we, yeah, how we looked, yeah. um, you know, how it looked to someone else. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so now it's like, okay, well, if it's, if it's making me feel good, I don't really, but once again, you can come along for this ride right. or not. <laughs> right. Right. Or what about if, I mean, to your duality idea, what if you like, I can be Leanne sitting on the couch with like, you know, my sweats on and I'm totally happy. Or I could be Leanne, like dressed up, you know, ready to go perform and be totally happy. Like yes, those I two do things, that. yeah, can yeah. exist and they can they both can. be really wonderful. But they can, but why are you dressing up? Ah, that's I, you tell me. That's so a that's great the thing. question. That's the thing, like why, that's what I ask myself is why do I feel like, do I feel like I have to dress up or am I dressing up because I want to dress up? That's a huge question Great that I question. ask myself all the time. And it's, is it coming from inside of me? Is it, you know, because I, there are times when I have wanted to get like all dolled up and like feel really good in that way, because that is a piece of me. Like yeah. I enjoy that, but is it coming from the enjoyment of it or is it coming mm -hmm. from the, you know, the, the have to. Right. Yeah. 
It's a, it's, and why do we like, why do we put makeup on? Why do we dress a certain way? Like when we actually choose clothes, like, and choose to look a certain way, is that a conditioned response? I mean, these yes. are all, yeah, <laughs> like right, most of the time, yes. Like, yes, it is. Yeah, most of the time it is. And so you yeah. start to ask yourself these questions. You don't see how conditioned we are. Yeah. Um, and then can you, like for me, especially around clothing, like I've, you know, can I show up in a way that other people that is opposite of the way people expect me to show up and still feel loved and, and enough? Yeah. You know, I mean, that is, and I think COVID, you know, during, during the whole pandemic, I think it really gave me the opportunity to start showing up in a different way. Um, and recognize that I don't have to be Leanne Rhymes and all its glory in order to still be Leanne Rhymes. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, the sweatpants tour. I'm still waiting for I that am, one. We are. We've literally just talked about it the other day. We're like, really? we can. Everybody can come in sweatpants. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. It's a beautiful I'm still idea. Thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, it, and you need to invite Jewel because I follow her yes! on Instagram, and she like yes. I freaking love that woman. Like she shows up in the airport, and she's like, "Look at what I put on!" Like I can't she believe I put. Up. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I can't believe not only did you put that horrific outfit on, but you're on Instagram owning it. It's so beautiful to watch and yeah. all her uh, uniqueness. So. I think that's a good idea. Maybe we should do the sweatpants tour. That would be really fun. You definitely. Maybe you can gather. <laughs> all the artists that have been dying to wear sweatpants yes. and you can be like the leader of the pack. I just I love, love it. it. It's like the new Lilith fair, but with yeah, sweatpants. Yeah, it's a, new, <laughs> it's a new Lilith fair. So uh, let's finish up on this thought. Um, it's kind of a big thought, but talk a little bit about what we've been doing with your health this year. You know, I, um, I, I don't know. I've never really told you this, but um, when you first reached out to me, I haven't really, I didn't really follow your career. You know, I knew your name um, and growing up in LA, you know, it was like, I kind of knew celebrities to be a little high maintenance and <laughs> oh, uh, I'm high maintenance. Don't worry. <laughs> you're high- your boxer at four in the morning, like Mindy, <laughs> my hormone. <laughs> yeah. But you, you know what? I, this is what I, I, I will continue to say about you. You are so kind. You are so um, grateful. It's never felt like work to, to answer your Voxer. Like you just come with such heart that it just is easy for me. Um, but I didn't think I would go into this experience like that. I, I, do you remember like when, when I met you, I was like, here, why don't you do some things and call me in a month. And you had this like, look on your face. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not leaving me out here in the wilderness by myself. I know. And I, I, re- I remember looking at you and going, oh shit. Like, you know, that's a lot of work. Are you ready to do this? So yeah. how, much, how much work has it been? I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of work. Um, I have, I don't even know where to begin with how much work I've done. Um, I've been very committed very very committed and um yeah you're always like I can tell you to do something you just go do something you just like all right let me go do that let me try that if anything I have to be careful like because and you know I think it's I I actually think it's a skill of of how you got to where you are is that you have that override system of like I see a goal and I'm gonna go for it and nothing's gonna stop me but your nervous system needs me to hold you back sometimes. <laughs> no, it does. Um, yeah, my when we when we first went into um, detox, and I had these little droppers that it was like you know, but he's like, take it, just take a couple drops, and I thought like more is always better, and so I took a whole <laughs> dropper full, not just a couple drops, but a whole dropper full, and I was in a fetal position for like. 24 hours as all of these metals are coming out of me and uh yeah that was a nightmare so yes you have to be careful with me but I I have a hi Caitlin you want to say hi I am I definitely have I I, you know healing's an interesting journey and my I I think I've I don't realize how far I've come and yes like, like my trainer today saying, Oh, you have so much more energy, even though you're tired, like you're still here and you're not like dragging. So I think, 
you know, I've, I've, I've try, I try everything. <laughs> I'll try everything once pretty much. Yeah, you will. Um, I will. I can, I can, I can attest to that. Yes. And, and I've learned, like I've learned a new language. I mean, ultimately like that's the biggest thing is I've learned, you know, I've learned a new language of hormones and, you know, one of the most incredible things is the neurotransmitter piece for me, because I didn't realize that hormones and neurotransmitters were so intrinsically tied together mm -hmm. and, you know, suffering from anxiety and depression off and on my whole life. I, it gave me some new context around what was actually happening in my body and that I wasn't insane. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, you know, hormones really did play this key role in every bit of what I was going through. So, you know, we've, we've come at, we've come at hormones, we've come at neurotransmitters, we've come at amino acids, like we've, we've gone through hyperbaric with me, we've gone through red light, we've got, I mean, if you just name it, uh, yeah, I should say all the things, all name the it, things. It, and I'm sure there's plenty more, but yeah. I, I do, you know, I've, I, um, you know, each month is different. Each month is a roller coaster, and there's so many variables. Like there's so many external factors, whether I'm traveling or, you know, if I've had high stress in my life, like, it, am I making enough estrogen because I've had too much high stress? Like it's, it's, there's every month is different, but ultimately I see myself moving in the direction of health and, and just like I said, you know, we keep saying this word awareness. I think awareness is key. And even if I'm, even if I feel like I'm kind of spiraling backwards, sometimes just the awareness of what's going on mm -hmm. and how I, the tools I know how to help myself out of that spiral is, you know, far from the place that I was when I first met you. Amazing. Like, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I'm like, I like, a pr again, I'm back here as like a proud mama. It, it You know, I wish only, I think. So maybe, maybe Eddie might know what you've been through, but I feel yeah. like, um, I'm, 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 I just am so, um, proud and honored, uh, to watch you go through this experience because it hasn't been easy and you're a fucking champ. Like Thanks. you have showed up every day for yourself to continue to learn and continue to grow. Like you do anything I ask you to do. Like it's, it's been one of the, the true, the greatest honors of my life as a doctor Ooh. to watch you try on health and undo, you know, what, what you were brought up in. It's just, it's incredible. It's, it's right. really incredible to watch. So I love knowing your I love knowing your thought process of when you first met me now, because oh really? <laughs> you just didn't know how much you were gonna love me. You had no idea. I had no <laughs> idea. No, I'm no. In fact, I, if anything, I was like, oh god, okay, here we go. She's you know a big celebrity. Like what? Are, okay. <laughs> And then like, I've told you this, like about two months in, you just crawled right into my heart. And I, I was know. like, this is same just a, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, you have been, you have mothered me in so many ways around my health and in that I didn't, you know, I'd never had anyone teach me this stuff. And so it was, you know, to find a woman who, who's had that you mean, like I said, you taught me a whole different language. You taught me the language of my body, something I've been so disconnected from for so long um you know to to have this kind of mind body spirit like synchronicity like um it it feels yeah I mean you're you've been the first person to teach me and so on so many levels mm -hmm. um how to take care of myself like in in a real way where it's not it's not superficial like I'm caring for myself from the inside out. Yeah. And I think I've done so much work for myself on a spiritual level and an emotional level. And I've never had that physical component tied in. And so with you, it was like this kind of, we talk about pieces of the puzzle all the time. It's like, it was like kind of that missing piece that fit in that allowed me to have that physical component. Um, 
that allowed me to fully start healing because the body, the body has to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I have talked about this, like, you know, if you're just working one piece, like whether it's a medication or maybe it's one biohack or one diet or, you know, what everybody wants to know from me is like, what's the best fast? What's the one thing? Yeah. Yeah. What's the one thing? And I'm like, I'm not your one thing gal. Like I I'm what I truly believe. um, And this is I, from the day I met you, is that you are living in this body that is a, capable of miracles. And it's been really interesting to hear your journey. Um, the other thing, by the way, I didn't know anything about Leanne Rhymes. And then once we started working together, I was like, well, shoot, I can't really read about you because I no. wanted I wanted to hear from you. Like I didn't want anything to like sway me in and really understanding you. Mm-hmm. And the you know here we sit nine months, however many months, and thousands of com- hours of conversations later, and I still see this pure soul that ha- is so capable of not just healing, of loving, and that it's all the interferences, the physical, mm-hmm. the emotional. This is why I wanted to have this conversation with you is like, I'm hoping that people will see that they are you and it maybe they didn't weren't didn't have your upbringing, but they had some other trauma. They had some other unusual situation. And yet they still is, there's this pure loving human that deserves a chance at health. Mm -hmm. And it's just been such a blessing for me to be, have a front row seat to that um, for you because, and you, you work so hard at it. And I, and you and I've talked about this before, like, how are we going to change? How are we going to go down and help the teenagers? And how are we going to really make an impact on women's health when we have so such a misdirected outside in world? So it, you know, if you could, if you had a room of 16 year olds in front of you right now, and you could give them some advice, what, what would you tell them? Oh my gosh. I mean, I think the first thing is educate yourself, like get get to know your body, educate yourself. Like, you know, no one's going, no one out there, if you're lucky, you'll have someone like you in, in their life, but I think the biggest piece is self-knowledge and self-awareness. Um, yeah, because y- you have to, it has to come from inside. Like it has to come from, I think that if we can, I know I was a very curious child and I that got stuffed down. Mm. Um, and instead there was like this perfectionist that came into play and my curiosity and play kind of like got left out. And I, over the past several years, the cure, and especially I think my health journey has actually brought that play back in because I, I am so curious about, you know, you and I are constantly like, well, let's try this and let's see what this will do. Oh, nope, that didn't work. So let's try what that works. So it's, it becomes this, you, you start to, um, for me, I've started to really, uh, bring that curiosity back into my life. Love and it. I'm recognizing like how curious I really am. Like I want to learn and I'm, I'm always trying new things and seeing what works best. And I think keeping that curiosity um, with a front row seat in our life is so important. Yeah. And so, and you know, any 16 year old girl, like you're, you're your own unique thing, your yes. body, your mind, your situation, your traumas, your joys, it's its own, your desires, it's all, you're your own unique fingerprint. Yeah. The way the lens you look through is its own unique view. Like, yeah. and your intuition about your health and your body is what should guide you, not anyone outside of you. And so I think you have to find people that you can, that trust your own intuition. And that will be in, um, in collaboration with with you yeah. uh it's not just a one size fits all like you're saying the one thing you can do yeah. the one pill you can take it has nothing to do with that it's getting to know the mental physical emotional spiritual pieces of yourself and trusting it and and, and then finding people that can collaborate with that yeah amen like i very well said i keep saying like one of these days i'm like we're gonna turn you into like a 
a health coach or a doctor. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, you have a really good profession already. <laughs> I do. But it's it's funny because I that is such a piece that I'm I love this. Like mm-hmm. I love and I love I, I've never thought of myself as a teacher, but I'm finding that I'm stepping into that role even more as I share my own journey. It's just part of my teaching. My music is part of my teaching. Like, yeah. um, and it's not from a teaching of I know better. It's like I I've experienced this and here's what I know. So take it from there. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like I want to share this so that like I go back to that thing of you don't feel alone in this journey. Um and I do have a lot of wisdom because I have lived a lot of life at 40 and I have so much more to learn. And there goes the curiosity of like, what else, what else can I learn? So yeah, there is a, there's a piece of me like, you know, through my podcast and, and through my music and just through my journey now, I feel like I, I am becoming this kind of like health, um, emotional, spiritual helper. There we go. We're going to give you a name. We're going to give you a name. Uh, Yeah. uh, um, I'm a guide. Maybe like a Sherpa. You know, yeah. Like, you know, you and I have talked about this idea of mothering a culture. And I really like I when when you and I had that conversation, I saw that so much for you. I even see it for my own self of like, Mm. no, that's the role I want to step into. And I see that as a role that that you so deserve to step into because you set a culture in motion when you were 13 and now you're setting a different culture for women into motion at 40. And it's not just how you're showing up, but it's the songs you're writing and the, the interviews, the changing of how you're talking in the interviews, when people ask you questions like, and you standing in that authentic version of yourself, you have, I, I, I think, you know, but I don't think you completely know the impact it makes on the world. When you stand up and say, this is what I stand for. You literally change the culture of women. Yeah, no, I, I, I do I'm aware of that and I take that into consideration when I do what I do and I I know so many women grew up with me and now we're all the same age and so they you know I do have the opportunity with the platform that I have to to shift and shift the world in the direction I want to see it go you know it's like we have to create the world that we want and it's like how do I want to show up in that world and I love that idea of mothering a culture. Like, you know, I've never had children of my own that have come through me, although I've helped raise two boys. But I, I feel like I I do have a very strong motherly instinct. Um, and I feel like it's been utilized to birth projects and things and creation into this world. And now it's being utilized in this way of being able to share my truth, being able to to hopefully guide people, you know, through different rites of passage at times, you know, um, I mean, look, we all, if you've grown up with me, we've all been through rites of passage together. Like, you know, we, we grew up in our teenagers together. We've gone through our twenties together and look now here we are at this other, you know, threshold of, of, you know, perimenopause and menopause and, and really these, I think these are very formidable, formidable years. Like as, as women, like it's like, we almost can rebirth ourselves in a way. And I'm now helping people walk through this by just sharing my own journey, you know, as authentically and honestly as I can. And, you know, there's, I, I, I'm an open book. Like there's really not much that's off the table with me. Yeah. It's really impressive. (laughs) Yeah. Which is probably freeing for you just to like, just put it all out there and just be, if, if I know that you're a, you're a, you love words and you and I have chatted about like, yeah, I always find it, yeah, I always (laughs) find it really interesting when you and I talk about words, because how many words are in a song? Oh, I don't know. Very few. Like we have to put a lot into a little. Into a little. And I get like 80, you know, fast like a girl's 83,000 words. So, um, <laughs> so I get like, oh, if I didn't say it in that chapter, let me say it in the next chapter. I get like right. a lot more words than a song. But if you had one word to describe you before 40, since I don't, I, we can't let we can't let 40 go away from this conversation because that was a pivotal yes. moment. If you had one word to describe yourself before 40, what would it be? Oh. 
I don't know. I know what the word is after 40 or at 40. Yeah, I, I, I haven't asked you that question yet. <laughs> I know, but I know you're going there. I know what that is. Um, Maybe you need a couple words. You can have a, you can, you can have a couple words for before 40. Yeah. Um, guarded. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Okay. okay. What is it? Af- what is it after, after 40? Grounded. Ooh, I got chills. Yeah. Yeah. The- I feel very, someone said to me the other day, you feel very centered. And, um, I said, yeah, I get thrown off of it all the time, but I still know where my center is amidst that chaos. Yeah. Um, Wherein I think in before, well, before these last few years, I feel like I didn't have a sense of center. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe that's what it is even more, like more so than grounded. I feel centered. I feel like somebody needs to write an article or you need to do a, a song title or something that's like, from from guarded to grounded oh I like that like I like that that needs to be like representing like your your next phase because I can see that so clearly just even in the short time I've worked with you for Mm -hmm. sure I see that shift happening just you know it's it's pretty impressive to watch so yeah thank you Okay, my last yeah. question. This is the one I ask everybody. So I got to ask you too. Every year we do a different theme for the podcast. And this year I really wanted to do um, gratitude because I feel like we went into this year with so many of us complaining about COVID or politics or it was just complain, complain, <laughs> complain. And so I wanted our podcast to sound for gratitude. So do you have a gratitude practice? If so, what is it? And what is one thing you're grateful for in 2022? I had a really solid gratitude practice for a while. I don't so much daily anymore, but though I find myself, um, I find myself have trained, I've trained my brain enough to be, to see the, the, the things I'm grateful for in my everyday. I, I really, something I love doing is I talk to my food often. Oh. So when I get food, I'm like, thank you so much for nourishing me. I do that often. Um, yeah. And so, but I've, I've really trained my brain, like I said, enough to be like, oh, I'm grateful for everything for like, for this beautiful day. I went for a bike ride earlier and I was like, oh my God, the breeze feels so good. Mm. Like I was just felt so good about <laughs> how I felt to be outside. So, yeah. um, so I've come a long way. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but, my God, you have. Yes. But I, I think I'm grateful um, I'm grateful for all so much, honestly. But um, the one thing that I have been incredibly grateful for recently that I used to feel so much shame around is my rebelliousness. Ooh, um, yeah. And I, I used to feel so shameful for being rebellious because I think it's gotten me <laughs> into a few sticky situations. Um, but it's also, I recognize it also saved my life many, many, many times. Yeah. Um, and so from that perspective now to accept it know that it's just an absolute beautiful piece of me and how I've created so many things from that space um how I've fought from that space for my life um many times Mm -hmm. and I'm just really I've come into deep gratitude for that where I've and that's in the last probably like six months where I was very ashamed of it before yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And I think as women, you and I have talked about this is that we need more rebellion. We need yeah. to, we need more authentic, uh, standing in our own strength. So that, uh, that's just amazing. Yeah. Well, you thank know, you. I'll tell you what I told you back in the spring. Thank you for just crawling in my heart. I, yeah. I had no idea that I was in for this ride with you. And, um, it's really, it's really, truly been an honor to be, on the path with you. And I just, you, you amaze me and impress me every day in your Mm. strength and your authenticity. And I just, yeah, this has been one of the greatest joys of my career. So thank you. Same, same. Thank you for, thank you for being here for me through every morning and every night. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's, 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 it's all good. Again, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like joy. And I, um, 
I, I just want the world, I'm so happy we had this conversation because I want the world to see and interact with the beautiful woman that I get to interact with and just what you're doing is incredible. So uh, oh, how do, I'll, I'll ask you what everybody, I ask everybody else, how do people find you? Where do they go? Follow people, you? <laughs> well, you can find me at leanrhymes.com. As simple as that. And just search my name on pretty much anything. You'll find me. <laughs> Amazing. And the, your new album, by the way, I is out. And if you yes. guys don't know, and um, I'm not going to, I mean, this is going to come from my uneducated musical point of view. Um, it's not country. No, no, you're right. I don't there's, even know what it is. There's rootsy element. I don't know what it is either. There's rootsy elements to it, but it's not country. It's um, there's a bit of tribal, uh, primal, ethereal, something going on. It's, um, <laughs> it is amazing. Thanks. And the words like that you, I, the, 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 I told you when you, the, in awakening, when you're like surrendering is, te is, uh, terrifying. I literally want to send you a message every day, every day and be like, no, it's fucking terrifying. Like, yeah. Like that is an <laughs> understatement. You can't just put that in a song and walk away from the line. Yeah. Like it's horrifically yes. terrifying. It so, is. but is. I, think, I might have downplayed that just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think you. I think what I've learned in the listening to your current music is that you put words to what we're all feeling, mm -hmm. and it really is. It's therapy for those of yeah. us that are listening to you. So. Yeah, I mean, I definitely tap into the collective experience, especially with this record and. Um, yeah, we're all going through it. We're all yeah. on this human weird ride thing together, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I love thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you thank so you. much.